Hello everyone, in this video, how to win with the Nimzo defense. Well, we're gonna follow the example of Magnus Carlsen, Wonegan Wesley So, Nakamura, Shankland, and many others. But the question is, who else plays the Nimzo? Well, you guessed it, all the top players in the world, they do play this opening. So let's get started. In this video, I will go with advanced variation and use Grandmaster level games and prep. But first, I'd like to recap the key ideas in the Nimzo if you're not familiar with that. So let's say I play e3 and then castle and let's put knight f3. Black can take here and play against the double pawn. So you can play with b6, bishop a6, knight c6, a5, and that's a positional plus that white has a double pawn, right? Now, of course, you, when you play the Nimzo, white can play queen c2. And where the idea, after a3 you take, and now by recapturing like that, you don't have with white the double pawns. That's a completely different game. We'll show how to play for a win with black. Now, another thing that I can show you is that if we play b6 here, which is something we're gonna show in this video because we have a lot of ideas with the bishop on b7, why can play knight g e2? Lots of players with white like to do that. Why? Let's say I play bishop b7 here, a3, you take, and now you recapture. Once again, you have a sound pawn structure with white. So now, of course, uh, knight f3 is a move, e3 is a move, queen c3 is a move, but you have a lot of different ideas. Sometimes f3 can be played, it's very aggressive, or you can face bishop g5 and so on. So there are quite a few different ways to proceed in the initial position. I'll soon show lots of ideas, variations and games. But one last thing, on the top left, you have the key grandmaster in the world. On the right side, the key and most popular move is white on the top board and the bottom right some ideas that you have to be ready for. And with that, let's go and let's see the themes. And here, let's see tactical idea number one. Let's go to the 12 move. And here, this is black to play. Now, just notice that white has a double pawns and black has a bishop on b7, targeting the long diagonal. And here, the key move is rook f6. So why is it so important? You put rook f6 and then the rook can go to g6 or h6, targeting the open lanes. So that's a rook lift, also called rover, rook over. Now rook f6 played, rook a d1, rook g6, targeting the g2 pawn. As you can see, this is extremely dangerous. Bishop a3 and now knight c5. We attack the queen. So I took and we take on f3. How to defend g2? Well, why try g3? Now feel free to pause the video. How do you continue with black? And the answer is the typical queen h4. Of course, white cannot take because of the pin. That was the whole idea to put rook on g6. So rook fe1 played. And how do you finish the game? Well, uh, with black, you have a force mate. Check. Check. Check mate on h1. Let's go to the next example. So here, I'm gonna go to move 10, black to play. A little bit similar to the previous game, but the bishop is still on c1, the queen is on c2 instead of b3. And here, queen h4. So in this position, white play g3 to attack the queen. So you may think, let's move the queen. Where should the queen go? Well, if you think a little bit more, there's another idea. Can you spot the idea? I'll give you a few seconds. Congrats if you found the move. The winning move is knight g5. Now, the key idea is, of course, why cannot take? This is a beautiful checkmate because that bishop on b7 is controlling all the squares. 
Now the key idea here is why could try e4 to block the long diagonal. And here you take, you give a check, you give a check, and now you're covertly winning with the black pieces in this position. So in this uh, position, d5 may be an idea, and you continue with knight h3, and then you move the queen here, and you have a lot of attack. Of course, you're pressuring the king. So in the game, f3 was played, but queen h5, you have a very good position, and d6 was played, followed by knight d7, e5, f4, you have a great attack with the black pieces and black one. Let's see another tactical motif. In this game, playing with black, Grandmaster Nigel Short from the UK. Let's go to the position on move 14, black to play. How do you finish off the game? Give you a few seconds, feel free to pause the video. And the winning move is bishop takes g2. Now, of course, white cannot take. That would be checkmate. So here, white tried f3. Now, queen h3 played, and after queen g2, rook g6, win the queen, and the game. Now, on f3, you could also do bishop h3, followed by rook g6, same idea, you're winning on the spot. Let's go to another example. Uh, don't worry, I will also show lines how to get to this position, but I believe to really play an opening well, you need to master the tactics. For instance, on the board on the left side, you can see queen h4, followed by queen h2 check, and with the rook on g6, you're gonna give checkmate on h1. You need to know these tactics, then you can play confidently the opening and go for the attack right away. Now I'll show you one more thing before I go to the concrete variation in the opening. And this is a game where Grandmaster with the white pieces is Bareyev and he lost very quickly. So this is the position on move 13, black to play. Once again, feel free to pause the video and try to work out the best move in this position black to play. And the answer is the amazing bishop f3. Now some of you may have said, well, bishop g2 seems like the previous position. But that doesn't work, because if you do check here, white will put a knight on g3. But you can try rook h6 here, targeting h2, but why can defend? Knight g3, now you give a check for instance, and king f3. Even if you give a check like that, king f3, and it's only a draw equal position here, you have no forced win, white is threatening rook h1. So in this position, while tempting, bishop g2 is not the solution, but bishop f3 is winning on the spot. Now the first thing is if white takes, of course you do rook h6, threatening checkmate, rook e1, only move to try to escape, but here you have check, check, and once again checkmate on h1. So clearly the bishop cannot be taken, but if you wait and do a passive move, when queen g4, obviously, it's going to be um, almost checkmate, and then you, you can take on e2 and play rook h6 with a winning position. Now, the best move here may be e4. Now you do queen g4, turning checkmate. Now, of course, the knight cannot come in because you win the queen, so g3 is forced, and you simply take here with a winning position. Let's say white play a move. Now you go queen h3. Threatening checkmate, knight f4, and you simply take, and this is game over and checkmate on g2. The queen takes, you take like that, and you finish with a knight checkmate. 
So in this position, amazing move, bishop f3, completely winning for black. And now let's go to some concrete variations, how to get there, how to play against queen c2, and all these variations I've shown in the beginning. So now I'm ready to show some lines, and this is the part two of this video, how to get to the position that I've shown before and create attacking chances with black. So let's see the key idea we've seen in many tactical finishes. E3, B6, we put the bishop on B7, of course, targeting this long diagonal, knight F3, and now knight E4, creating pressure against the knight. Queen C2, logical, F5, support the knight, and then we double the pawns, we'll play castle, 92 in this case, and here we go with queen h4, and if it's g3, the nice tactics, knight g5, ensures great attacking chances for the black pieces. Let's see another line. Right here, white try knight f3, b6, we put the knight on e4, now we don't, don't take on c3 but play f5, that support the knight, and later we can do our rook lift and maybe attack against the king, queen c2, now white try c5. So the rook f6, that the rook lift we've seen, followed by the rook coming to the attack. And here f3 played. And what is the key move on move 12? Queen h4. Such a strong attack against the white king. White took on e4. But here, take and black as a winning position. In the game, bishop c4 was played, and black did knight c6, and knight a5, followed by rook f8. This is a strong move. But if white had taken here, queen h4, double attack, and you win the bishop. So again, on f3, the key move was queen h4 with a winning attack. So that's something to remember. In this last example, it is my honor to present Hu Yifen game with the black PCs using the Nimzo. One of the greatest players and games I've seen. So the former world champion for the women faced Queen C2. So she castled. And now we get this position where there are no double pawns. But what is the idea here? the same. As you will see, queen e8 played. That's a little bit mysterious. But the knight f3, b6 is played. And now we get bishop b7. So you may wonder what the queen is doing here, but that will become very clear in the next few moves. Knight bd7. b3. White is trying to get some play on this long diagonal. But knight e4 played. Queen c2 and f5 and now the queen on e8 can come to h5 or can support e5 and what do we do with a rook as always a rook lift and the rook over so 9 e1 played rook f6 rook lift f3 played e4 played so white is threatening the knight and f4 now, 9g3, this is all logical, and e5. As you can see, the queen here is supporting the e5. These pawns are very strong. And now we're going to target the black king. So d5 played. That's a mistake. The best move was to take like that because here white would continue to fight, right? Now, it's still not over after this. You could do the fancy queen h5 and queen e5 is not possible because let's say knight f3 and you capture the queen but you would have 
after rook h1, rook h6, and then attack. At any rate here, white played d5, and queen h5 played, and now we get that knight, this rook coming, the other rook coming, and white is too passive. This is not threatening anything, this is boxed in, and white pieces don't have a life. So let's see, knight f2, rook h6. And now we've seen that motive in the previous segment of the video, black is attacking h3 played and now feel free to pause the video how do you finish the game well bishop take h3 is a solution white took take take threatening tons of check bishop f1 white is hoping to control here the second rank but of course we do check check and root takes a2 with a winning position, of course, you can have knight h5, knight g3, the king in the center, and white resign. So again, what was cool about this game is queen c2 was played. Yes, white avoided the weakness on c3, c4, but nevertheless, there was a very strong attack, and the classic rook f6, rook h6, the queen on the h5, attacking and the bishop coming attacking here that was a wonderful attack by the women's world champion who Yifun. so with that i conclude the video i hope you enjoy the variation and the themes and i wish you good luck if you play the nimzo feel free to post a comment drop a like and if you haven't done so subscribe to the channel thank you very much